So imagine having finished a sumptuous lunch, you walk over to the counter and the owner says, No, no, no. Next day, next day. What do you mean? No, no. A free lunch? Who does that? Well, this man does. And ironically, it was a lunch he had with Warren Buffett for which he paid $650,000. But it's that lunch in 2008 that put him on everyone's radar. If you don't know who Mr. Pabra is, here's a list of some usual and unusual facts about him. But the one I really like is about the Dakshna Foundation he started in 2005 that tutors and helps children from poor economic backgrounds to attend the IITs and other elite higher learning institutions. Mr. Pabrai's primary occupation is to run the Pabrai Investment Funds, which manages over $700 million in a year. Now, the genesis of the free lunch portfolio was an article Mr. Pabrai had co-written for Forbes in 2017, where he outlines a rather shameless strategy of cloning what other great investors were doing. You see, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC in the United States, requires all individuals and entities who have invested at least $100 million in the US equity markets to disclose their holdings on a quarterly basis. This is public information and Pabrai put together a simple cloning strategy, the details of which are available in the article he wrote. But to put it in numbers, this copycat portfolio gave an annualized return of 15.5% over a 17 year period, while the S&P 500 delivered just 4.8%. So that's an alpha of 10.7%, which is insane. And it's what prompted him to start his own free lunch portfolio. And in this video, we'll understand the construct of this portfolio, the actual stocks that are a part of it, how has the portfolio performed, and most importantly, if we were to create an Indian version, then which stocks will be a part of it. And while this video is about a free lunch, if you want a free investing breakfast, lunch, dinner, and the dessert, then do subscribe to my channel and tap on that like button. Let's begin. The free lunch portfolio consists of 15 stocks, that is five stocks in three different categories. What are these categories? There are the spawners, then we have the shameless cloners, and thirdly, there are the uber cannibals. Now, before I explain each of these categories, I should mention that this free lunch portfolio is not exactly Mr. Pabrai's portfolio. There are some differences, but I think this portfolio still reflects large parts of how Mr. Pabrai thinks. So my request is let's look at this as an experimental portfolio, something which has a good storyline and something that can improve the way we select stocks or funds for the long term. That being said, let's start with the first category, the spawners. Spawners are companies which have incubation in their DNA. In other words, they are able to put together the capital, the infrastructure, the people and the project plan to start new businesses that have the potential of becoming big multi-billion dollar businesses on their own. So Alphabet, Google is a good example of a spawner that started as a simple search engine, but today this company has a number of billion dollar businesses within it. Companies like YouTube, Nest, Fitbit, Boston Dynamics, Android, Maps, Waze, etc. The same goes with Disney, which has its film studio, theme parks, toys, Pixar, their OTT channels, etc. Amazon is another one with Amazon.com, Prime, Games, Whole Foods, AWS, Kindle, their logistic business, etc. These companies follow a very tried and tested model. That is, they have one cash cow. So in the case of Google, it's the revenue they make from advertising. And this money is aggressively reinvested into other businesses which might not be related to the main business, but can nevertheless fuel the future growth of that company. Now, Munish Pabrai has been publishing his free lunch portfolio since 2018, I think. And these are this year's spawners. There's TAV Airports, which operates 15 airports in eight countries, Restaurant Brands, which has 28,000 restaurants in more than 100 countries, Starbucks, which sells billions of dollars of overpriced coffee and calls it an experience. Then there is Microsoft, which is actually catching up pretty well in the spawning department. And finally, there is Brookfield Corporation, which recently spun off an asset management division and owns a lot of real estate, infrastructure, renewable power, and private equity assets. In fact, until last year, Berkshire Hathaway was a part of the spawner's portfolio, but for this year, Mr. Pabra has pushed it out, and these are the five stocks he recommends for this year's spawner's list. Now, Mr. Pabrai often addresses himself to be a shameless cloner, and there is some truth to this. After all, he has invested in what Berkshire Hathaway was buying on multiple occasions, and has even copied the Buffett partnership structure when he launched his Pabrai investment funds. So over time, Mr. Pabrai realized that there are many value-oriented investors 
who have been in the investing game for many decades and are therefore experts in certain areas and sectors. Which means with a bit of due diligence and by looking into their 13F filings, Pabrai realized that he could simply copy some of their high conviction bets and create a small stock portfolio out of it. And who are these experts? We are talking about the best of the best. Buffett and Charlie Munger from Berkshire, Bill Ackman from Pershing Square, Although I don't put Mr. Ackman in the value category, then there is Eddie Lampert from ESL, Guy Spear who runs the Aquamarine Fund and is a great friend of Mr. Pabrai, David Tepper of Appaloosa Management, Lilu of Himalaya Capital, and of course, Munish Pabrai himself. The 2023 Shameless Cloners list includes Resas Logistics, which is again Turkish, Alphabet, which was picked by the Children's Investment Fund, Chipotle, which is Pershing Square's high conviction bet, Alibaba Holdings by Appaloosa and finally Tencent on which value partners are quite bullish on. Now notice here three out of the five companies Pabrai has picked here are not domiciled in the United States. One is Turkish, the other two are Chinese, which should not come as a surprise given the low valuation these companies are at currently. In fact, Alphabet gets over 50% of its revenue from outside the United States, which makes the shameless cloners part of Pabrai's free lunch portfolio a good proxy for international diversification. The last set of companies that make up the free lunch framework are the Uber cannibals. These are companies that are buying back their own shares and companies that do buybacks are generally the ones which have a decent amount of cash with them or they don't foresee much competition or disruption in their business model. And of course, they think their stock is a bit undervalued at the moment. As a quick example, let's assume a company has 1000 shares and you are an investor there with a 30% stake. The company has good long term prospects but because of the general recession, the shares are trading at 500 rupees and the earnings are at 50 rupees a share. Now this company goes for a buyback and offers to purchase up to 200 shares at 600 rupees a share, a small premium to entice more participation in the offer. So that's an outgo of 1,20,000 rupees, which is not a problem for this company, but see what happens next. Firstly, this company's outstanding shares goes down from 1,000 to 800, which means your 30% stake has now increased to 37.5%. And secondly, at an annual profit of 50,000 rupees, the earnings per share, which was earlier 50 rupees, is now higher at 62 rupees and 50 paise. So effectively, and from an investor's perspective, I was able to increase my stake in the company without putting any additional capital from my side, which means there is more upside to me if the company does well in the future. Now, Munish Babrai's free lunch portfolio identifies five such companies that have been consistently buying back the shares. There's Assured Guarantee, which is into insurance and asset management. And from 183 million in 2011, they are down to just 86 million outstanding shares. Then there is Primerica, which is down from 72 million to 40 million. Naviant, which is into business process solutions. Discover Financial Services, which bought back over 40% in the last decade. And finally, there is Jack in the Box, which had 31 million shares in 2017 and is now at 21 million. The point is these companies have solid free cash flows and it's that money that they have deployed to buy back shares in their own company. So this is a setup that Munish Pabrai really respects and why it's a part of his free lunch portfolio. If you're getting good value from this video, then please do give this video a thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber yet, then do consider becoming one as I can then serve you videos as soon as they are released and also share with you some investing strategies, tips and stories that I continually post in the community section. All right, so we have our 15 companies split into three categories and it's a dynamic list because although Mr. Pabrai announces the portfolio constituents once a year, he also allows himself some flexibility. For instance, earlier this month, he replaced a couple of companies from his Uber Cannibals list and brought in eBay and Toll Brothers at the expense of Naviant and Discover Financial Services. Now, in terms of performance, the free lunch portfolio has not done as well as one might have expected. Well, the first three years, that is 2018, 19 and 20 were particularly bad. But in 2021, the Pabrai team made some changes to their methodology and the free lunch portfolio is a lot closer to how the S&P 500 has performed. Now, many investors will look at this returns table and say, hey, this portfolio doesn't work. But if you recall what I had said in a previous video, when we invest in a fund, we are actually investing in a fund manager. And in my view, Mr. Pabrai and the free lunch portfolio is built around value principles like spin-offs, cash flows, modes, etc. 
which does take some time to materialize and show results. Now, if you're keen on investing in a portfolio like this, or if you would like to use this concept to create your own portfolio, then Pabrai recommends one should equal weight the stocks, that is split your capital, let's say $15,000 and invest $1,000 into every stock. From an Indian perspective, I think we have enough companies and information to build a free lunch portfolio of our own. I should mention that I'm not a research analyst, so what I'm giving here is just food for thought and I'll appreciate if someone who knows more about this or is working on something similar, then kindly add your comments to this video. Okay, number one, so who are the spawners? Reliance Industries is one company that fits the spawners definition. So while their petrochemical, refining, oil and gas operations form the core of its business, the company has diligently used this cash cow to build big businesses in unrelated areas like telecommunications, retail, media, digital, healthcare, etc. In a similar format comes the Adani Group, which has interests in ports, power, airports, renewable energy, sports, etc. The State Bank of India is another spawner, which in addition to having major stakes in related subsidiaries, has also incubated Yono, its digital banking platform, which it is valuing at 40 to $50 billion. We also have InfoEdge India, which fits this definition and is a bit like the digital Berkshire Hathaway of India. Likewise, there is India Mart, which has been acquiring a number of businesses lately. And there's also IEX, Indian Energy Exchange Limited, which has spawned IGX or the Indian Gas Exchange, which is likely to have an IPO in the next two to three years. If you want to know more about spawners and how to identify them, I've included a couple of articles in the video's description. In box two are the shameless cloners. And for this, I access something called Superstar Shareholder Portfolios on Trendline.com. This page gives us a list of popular Indian investors and the stocks that they have recently bought and sold. For example, Rare Enterprises has bought some stake in Raghav Productivity Enhancers. Mukul Agarwal has invested in Tal Enterprises and has also sold off some shares in Paris Defense and Space Technologies Limited, etc. So effectively, this list tells us what the more popular and experienced investors are doing and therefore we can shamelessly copy from them. Of course, I would have extracted this data and given it to you in an Excel sheet, but this is a subscriber feature. So if anyone has access to this or a similar list in some other platform, then do share it with me over the comment section. Anyway, so once we have a list of maybe 15, 20 such shamelessly copied recommendations, Pabrai's article suggests a randomized selection of stocks so that our biases don't come in the way. And finally, there are the Uber cannibals and I've put together a list of Indian companies that have been buying back shares quite consistently. So first up is Balrampur Chini Mills, which has conducted six buybacks since 2017. So that's one per year. Next up is Wipro Limited, which did buybacks in 2016, 2017, 2019, and the last one happened in 2020. In fact, IT service companies do a decent number of buybacks as a way of deploying the huge reserves of cash that they hold in their books. For instance, TCS bought back shares worth 18,000 crores in 2022, and so did Infosys, which bought back over 6 crore shares at 9,300 crores. The third name in our consistent buyback companies list is Aarti Drugs, which has done this activity four times already in 2016, 2018, 2019 and 2021. The next list is, well, I've said it before, but I'm saying it again. It's TCS, Tata Consultancy Services, which first came out with a buyback plan in May of 2017. This particular buyback was worth 16,000 crores, which surpassed the previous record held by Reliance Industries when they repurchased around 10,000 crores worth of shares in 2012. Then in August of 2018, TCS came out with a similar sized buyback and then again in November of 2020 and again in March of 2022. And finally, there is Jagran Prakashan Limited, which has bought back shares in 2013, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2021, and again in 2022. So this company has been pretty active when it comes to buybacks. And if you want to search around a bit more, then do have a look at Nalco, Kaveri Seed, eClerk Services, and Quickfield Technologies, which are some other companies that have consistently bought back shares. All right, so in my view, the three constituents of the free lunch portfolio well, each of them have a good story to tell us and generally the performance numbers have supported that story. But remember, this is a stock picking portfolio, an active portfolio, so it makes sense to apply some of our learnings from other videos from this channel. 
videos on identifying coffee can stocks, monopolies, the magic formula, cash rich companies and even sector analysis which can all help in identifying a set of 6, 7, 8, 10 stocks that can make up an opportunity portfolio. And if you like Mr. Pabrai's methodology and stock selection, then you can even give this free lunch portfolio a try or try an Indianized version of it. I sincerely hope between spawners, shameless cloners and uber cannibals, you found a lot of useful information and will put it to the test. If you have any questions, do type them below, do subscribe to my channel, like this video, tell your friends about it and I'll see you three days from now. Until then.